Welcome, golf fans, pursuers of knowledge in the almighty dollar. This is your golf guru bringing you the 2022 Genesis Scottish Open. This is going to be an all-in-one show. It's going to be a preview. I'm giving my picks. I'll probably talk a little one and done while I'm going through this. Might even look at some cheapies. I'm going to give you ownership projections. We got to talk weather. We got to talk AM PM splits. There's a lot of information to cover, but I wanted to get a show out for you guys. My plan was to also do a uh, a Barbasol with this, but just so much I have to get through with the Genesis. And then I started to look at the field for the Barbasol and it just wasn't worth it. So, you know, if you're playing it, you got a few guys up top that we've been watching. Um, yeah, I made a few bets, but that's all I'm going to do with the Barbasol. But with that said, we're also doing a real quick recap of the John Deere. Had a little good outing there. And uh, with that said, let's go talk some golf because we have a lot to cover. Okay. All right, so just real quick, let's recap this. So uh, JT posted, of course, goes out, fires, what, a 62? Again, back-to-back, -back, round one 62s, which is just crazy for JT Poston. But he was running hot. We were on him the previous week. I was on him again, and uh, I hit him, of course, uh, as I kind of tweeted out. I hit him round one, and then hit him with an outright. So finally, we were due for some higher odds. Uh, nice 80-1 to 1 if you got, him, got on him early plus the 65 to one on the round one. So that was great. Uh, also you had Cebes who uh, just putted lights out. We'll look at his uh, stroking. And then of course, you know, my guy Grio that we've been, uh, I've been keeping a very close eye on and I actually had an outright on him too, which he was 80 to one also. So I was feeling really good going into Sunday, no matter if Emiliano somehow went out and went in Fuego and could catch JT Poston. But another wire to wire winner, we've seen a few of those in 2022. 20, uh, it was good. I needed it. Um, you know, I hit the Travelers and the John Deere last year, and when I missed on the Travelers, well, I just didn't want to bet Xander. Um, I just, like, as you guys know, if you follow me from a betting perspective, I don't bet guys, you know, 15 to 1. It just, there's not enough in it for me, and I'm not going to bet thousands of dollars on one guy, especially in uh, a golf event, because how volatile it is. So I'm always kind of looking for those long odds, and we finally got one here. It's been a while. So, Real quick, we can look at some of the uh, stroke gain information for you. Uh, as I mentioned, JT Poston gained 14.8 strokes total. Uh, it was a nice blend. Good on approach, good off the tee, you know, two, gained two strokes with the putter. I mentioned Cebes did a lot of it with his putter. And Emiliano's finally got his, uh, you know, his tee to green game back. Plus, he gained almost uh, four strokes with the putter. So if he does that, uh, it's going to be, you know, very hot. Of course, you had McCarthy fell back a little bit on Sunday. He shot even, if I remember correctly. Um, wasn't as hot. Typically, he's a little more uh, gained strokes with the putters, but had a really good uh, iron week. Then you have my guy, Cam Davis, who I also picked. Um, really good tee to green is typical. Just didn't do enough around the green with the putter. And then we had CH3 was another pick of mine who had a nice outing, but the putter just kind of, you know, didn't do, didn't do enough uh, to get him there. On a side note, Patrick Flavin, I have bet him, I believe, for the Barbasol. Um, his odds were up there, and I thought, you know, he had a good showing. He's been, you know, popping up here or there. So I thought that was kind of interesting. It's just a side note if you're interested in the Barbasol. So that's it. I hope you guys had a good John Deere. It was a profitable week. It was due, especially from a betting side. It's been a while. And, uh, yeah, kind of paid for uh, all the bets that I've had over the last, I don't know, month or so that have not come to fruition. All right, let's move along and talk about the Scottish Open. So I've got some information. Of course, this is now a PGA uh, sanctioned event, but they do not have out, which is like our superintendent information. So some of this I just kind of had to pull together, but it's enough. Um, if you got to watch this tournament last year or if you've really ever watched uh, the Open, uh, typically it is a link style course, so nothing crazy. Of course, we're in North Berwick, Scotland. And it's at the Renaissance Golf Club and has been hosting this event for the past four years. It was known as the Aberdeen. I think they even had the Barclays, but last I've known it was the Aberdeen Scottish Open. So since 2019, it has been at this course. I'll tell you right now, go check out the YouTube Brown highlights if you want to get a better understanding. Of course, I'm not going to go into the pictures and all that or a course map, uh, but your architect is Tom Doak. And the only thing unique I would state is that typically this event has played as a par 71. It is a par 70, and it is at 7,237 yards. I've got the scorecard from the PGA, so we'll go through that. And then from the fairways and the rough and the greens, they just call it like a fescue-based uh, grass type. 
So not a whole lot we can do at an analysis on that of, you know, who does well putting on these greens or whatever. Uh, but we got that information. It was a player field of 156. Of course, you probably heard that Ian Poulter uh, and some of the other guys went and filed a, you know, I guess I don't even want to call it a lawsuit to be able to play in this event. So right now, then they add to add these four extra live players in. And it's kind of interesting. If you look at their tee times, they've got a little snub where they're just sticking those guys by themselves. Um, a couple go out very early, like first tee times. And then I think the other two go off in the afternoon off the back. So, so we actually have a player field of 160 total. And it's going to be a little tougher to get six to six through because it is still a T65 in ties. Don't look at that historical cut line that is in, well, I don't know if that's correct or not, but I did not pull that up. It's just from the John Deere. But we do have some winning score information. Of course, Menwu Lee went in Fuego here last Sunday of last year and shot up the leaderboard and shot 18 under, which then got him in a playoff with Fitzpatrick and Thomas Detry. And Menwu Lee actually won that. And then the previous year, Aaron Rye won at 11 under, and that was in a playoff. So one thing you're going to see, the last three times it's been played here, we went to a playoff every time. Um, trying to see what else. And, of course, the weather, you know, we're going to talk a ton about that, but the weather is going to predict or, you know, is going to dictate, is a better word, uh, the outcomes. It could be, you know, maybe five under. If we get some crazy weather like today, uh, I'm recording this Wednesday afternoon, and the weather is – uh, blowing very hard there, but it doesn't look like it's going to be that bad for the tournament. We'll get into details. From what I can see, you've got pretty large, I think larger than average, larger than average green size here um, and slower uh, because of the winds. This is, of course, a coastal course and, um, you know, no shockers over in Europe and it could get very windy and the weather can change on a dime at any time. So what I've heard is kind of the step meter runs around 11. What does that tell me? They're flatter, larger greens, slower that guys that maybe don't putt typically as well um, on the crazy fast under undulated greens with some guys that we can look at. And then, uh, of course, defense I already mentioned. You got the wind. You got, you know, the typical tall fescue grass that you get in. There is some trees here or there and some pines. You've got these pot bunkers as typical in Europe that are, you know, well-placed. But you can keep the ball on the ground, run it up on the greens. It's not like the greens have sand all in front of them. And as I mentioned again, it, you know, we can look at the weather all we want, but of course it can change on a dime. And I also already mentioned the past notes that uh, the last three have went to a playoff. So we'll see how that works out this year. Also, of course, you probably saw the, the, the player feels the best has ever been for the Scottish Open. Uh, you got two parts of that, right? I'm sure the PGA with the new stronger alliance, I think now they have a 35, 40% investment uh, on the marketing side. And of course the John Deere was quite lackluster comparative if you looked at the live field which that happened over Oregon and I don't even know who won I think Brandon Grace won it I care less I think I did a round one one team and it was kind of funny I tweeted out like the guys I kind of put together kind of a plotters kind of guys like the, the Nas and I think I had Graham McDowell it didn't matter it was a disaster those guys were struggling in the beginning there at Pumpkin Ridge but enough of that I think we had enough on the course breakdown let's keep proceeding so what I did for you guys because in Fantasy National because this has been a European or DP World Tour event we are not going to see any tournament history whatsoever when I go through the analysis and so I wanted to just pull up you know last three years and you got to remember oh where I was at was that the field is way stronger than we've ever seen for this event and on two points, one was, as I was mentioning, I'm sure there was a little bit the PGA trying to get these guys there. But on the other side was, of course, the Opens next weekend. So these guys are all coming there to practice and to get used to maybe the climate, the winds, playing some Lynx golf. And with all that said, what I did is I went and highlighted a few guys that have showed up on the leaderboard here multiple times. You got Lucas Herbert with a couple T4s. You had Ian Poulter, which... Of course, was the one, as I mentioned, that filed the lawsuit to get in the tournament. He must really like this course. He's at a T4, a T6. Also feel like his game was in a little better shape at that time. And then you got Justin Thomas, who showed up uh, 2000, would that be 19? And then, of course, last year, didn't see him on here. Um, but you can look at the other guys. You know what? It, I don't know. I mean, it's so, it's going to be a little difficult because we don't have a lot of the, the, stroking analysis on a lot of the European players. And if you kind of took this field apart, um, you've probably got 50% that play on the PGA and about 50% 50 
that's playing over on the DP World Tour. And so there's going to be guys that either you've never heard of, maybe even some guys that I'm not familiar with that are going to show up, you know, in the top 10. And so the way I'm kind of going about this, and we'll get more when I get into picks, is I am doing an AM PM split. Uh, I do like what I see from a weather perspective of leaning that way. I'm not going super invested in this, considering we have the open next week. So I'm going to save some dollars for that. But also because I really do believe that you're going to have kind of the odd man that you don't know, like Jack Senor, who actually I think was leading this tournament uh, after like round three last year. And then, like I said, some of the guys came up. So anyways, it gives you a picture. If you are curious, saves you. I mean, you can go find this, of course, on the on the web. Uh, but I put it right here for you so you can screenshot it, take a little longer look at it. Okay, let's talk about this weather. So I mentioned right now, if you turn on the Golf Channel and they're showing some information that it is blowing like 30, 40 mile an hour, um, that is looks like it's going to subside. And you can kind of see that. And we're going to go also into Wind Finder because I pulled that up. But what I see, it's going to be a pretty nice morning for these guys. So the guys have the early tee times. And then it's going to be pretty, pretty blustery, comparative in the afternoon. So an 18 to 20. Um, and then it's kind of steady and it looks like, you know, it's going to be somewhere in the seventies. Uh, so it looks like it's going to be a nice week. My big concern is trying to get six to six through. So I want to take advantage of those morning tea times. All right, here's the scorecard real quick. And I'll highlight the hole that used to be a par five for these guys. Uh, last few years, it is now a par four playing at 505 yards and guys were eagling it quite often, definitely birdieing it. You know, if you didn't birdie it, you were losing a stroke to the field. They decided to make that a par four, a really long par four, which then turned it to a 70. Made it a little tougher, so now there's only three par fives. And the three par fives are almost, on average, around 600 yards. So you got number three, you got number 10, almost 600 yards, and then you got one a little shorter at 576. So I'm putting that in the model. You got some long par fours, so we need ball strikers. Uh, you got, you know, kind of all over on the par threes, 150, 218. 204, 161, and then a 203. So kind of a mix there. Uh, whenever I think of the long par threes, I always think of Billy Horschel, uh, who's in the field that does typically well, but he's got an afternoon tee time. Anyways, you can see if you want to you know, do a little deeper dive on your own, you've got the scorecard here from the PGA. Um, but the big thing I wanted to call out was it is not going to be a par 71. It is going to be a par 70 with only three par fives. All right, so I did build a custom stat model for you guys. And of course, this is how I'm rating my stroke gain analysis. How do I think the guys, what they need to win this tournament? Number one, ball striking. Like I said, you got a lot of long par fours. You got to take advantage of the par fives. Um, as always, approach, really, it hasn't changed a ton from the John Deere. A little something different instead of good drives. I went with driving distance with fairways because these are some really wide fairways. I think guys with distance could take advantage um, there's even a drivable par four, which I did not show. It's like 330 yards or something like that. Um, so I like that. Putting, you know, is down there because, again, I think anyone could get super hot with the putter here. So, again, I'm going to lean towards the ball strikers, not as concerned with the putting. I think you're going to need to scramble a little bit, of course, if you get into fescue. If the wind really does blow, um, you know, I mentioned there's a little bit of trees you can get in here. But, you know, getting out of the fescue, maybe getting out of some trouble. Around the green, you know, it's going to be turned down, but it's there. A little bit of sand, but the proximity to the pins that I'm seeing from the scorecard, I'm going to lean towards the ball striking side. What does that mean? Guys that are a little better further out uh, with the distances I'm seeing, 175 to 200, I think it's going to be key. And at 150 to 175. And then I mentioned the three par fives, 550 to 600. I mean, they're more closer to 600, but if you go to the 600 to 650, I felt like that was going to kind of skew things. So I'm going to stick with this. And then, guys, you know, I still believe guys are going to have to score here. And it doesn't look like the weather is going to be that bad. But, again, we don't know. As we know, it, it changes, as I mentioned, on a dime. All right. So, the first thing, as always, I did pull up recent form. And this was not pulling in. So, uh, some of the analysis is going to focus on the AM, PM splits. But you can see the tee times here um, to give you that kind of information. Of course, go check it out on PGA Tour. You know, you can get the tee times in quite a, quite a few places. But purely just looking at the field, no filters turned on, looking at the last 24 rounds or six tournaments. And again, my custom model is heavy on ball striking at 20%, approach at 20%. So that's 40% of the model right there. I want some bang uh, off, the, off the tee. So I got 10% on driving distance. I do want them to hit fairways. I mean, that tall fescue can definitely cause problems. So I'm going to put that at 10%. So it kind of equals out. So it's 20% weighted on the off the tee. 
you want to call it, or the driving aspect. And then around the green, putting at 5%. I have put that proximity 175, 200, because I think that's going to be more key than a 150 to 175. I don't have stats to prove that. It's just going off what I know from courses and looking at the scorecard. And then those par fives, I got 5%. Scrambling turned down to five. And then birdies at 5%. Of course, when we go look at picking this, I'll have where we can look at how these guys have been doing from a birdie perspective. With that said, uh, Max Homa is number one, even though he doesn't have the best draw in the tee time. You got Fitzy, JT, Shuffler, Hovland, Mito Piera, Shoffley, your Travelers winner. You got John Rahm, your Mexico Open winner. Keegan Bradley, just a ball striking expert. It's been close a couple times this year. You got Burns, who came out of nowhere on Sunday and won the Schwab. You got Hideki, who won the Sony. Actually had a couple wins in the kind of the fall um, slash start of the season. Jordan Spieth, who actually lost strokes putting and won the RBC. Corey Connors, who, you know, just an, an excellent ball striker, but struggles with the putter, but, you know, actually he's been putting pretty well. You got my guy, Sebastian Munoz, and you got Cameron Young, who we've been waiting like Will Z to get his, you know, first win, who's just been at the top of the leaderboards, except his last event where, I don't know if he missed a cutter. I think he missed a cutter, ended up like 60 or something like that. Okay, so the one thing I'm showing you guys what I looked up, the first thing is we're going to have wind. One way or the other, these guys are going to play in wind. And so if you want to know who the best wind players have been over the past 12 rounds, so now this is pulling in. could be the Arnold Palmer. Oh, and this is Windy AF, which is as fuck. Um, I didn't pull moderate in on this one, I don't think. It's just strictly the crazy wind. So like the Arnold Palmer we saw, the players – that kind of data is being pulled in and you got to take a look here on how many rounds so it gives you a better understanding um keegan bradley you got this jamie donaldson which i don't know that's probably really old data so i'd scratch that of course jt had that really nice round uh probably, i think it was the best round at the players when he had to go out i think on friday uh you had morikawa munoz andy sullivan again i don't know you know they play in such limited so if you see a name uh this could be european you, you got to kind of it could be literally three years ago you got Hideki, Tom Hoagie, Rom. Hoagie's interesting because he led. He's been struggling a little bit, but, man, he was firing with the irons. I think he led the whole tour uh, 150 to 175 off the top of my head. You got John, Rom, Antoine Rosser with only one round. And the time that I think of him, the I believe he's a Frenchman, um, was I think he beat Rom to get out of his pod for the Dell match play a couple years back. So that's what I think of Antoine Rosner. You got Homa again, Cantley, Henrik Stenson which I wouldn't put any weight in that. Mito and Corey Connors. So gives you an idea. And then if we take, uh, I believe I did 24 rounds for you too. Some of these same guys pop in, but again, scratch that Jamie Donaldson, but you know, Keegan Woodland, guys that we would know that typically Harris English, who's in the field, of course, putted lights out. I think he gained like seven, eight strokes with the putter at the, the John Deere. Um, but still, I think ball striking is a little bit, you know, in the day when he was at full ball striking, uh, he could definitely handle the win. You got Morikawa. Again, if Sullivan shows up, don't worry about him. Matsuyama, Rahm, Straka, Neiman, Pierre, I'll skip Rosner, Stenson, and Munoz. Now what I wanted to pull up is just best ball strikers. Again, no filters on against my model. If you want to know over the last six tournaments, Will Z, no shocker, Homa, Rahm, Pierre, Hovland, Xander, Liss, Spieth, Thomas, Scheffler, Matsuyama, Cameron Young, Connors, Fitzpatrick, and Morikawa. I like this list of guys. Um, I'm leaning on quite a bit of these, just if you want my preference. Uh, so I don't mind this model. Just, you know, I'll, I'll share that always with you guys. When I see something that looks from my eye that, is, that passes the sniff test, if you want to leverage this list of guys, I think you couldn't do too bad. Now let's get to where I'm letting you guys know my narrative. My picks are going to be really heavy weighted on this AMPM splits. I did this for the players and it worked out really well. We'll see how it works out this time, but I always feel like, you know, you got 160 players, you've got to take a lane. Of course, yes, I'm looking at certain skill sets. And then what I want to do is who's got an advantage with that skill set. And I believe it's the guys that go out in the morning on Thursday, um, comparative to the guys that have to go out in the afternoon. And we'll all show you that when we get into Windfinder. With that said, if you want to know from against my model over the last six tournaments, 24 rounds, no filters turned on, except all I'm showing you is the guys that have the early tee times. Here's the guys that show up that I'm interested in. You got Scheffler, Hovland, Pierre, Rahm, Bradley, Burns, Spieth, Connors, Chris Kirk. You got Cam Smith again. You got Smalley, Neiman, Vegas, List, JJ, Spawn, who his game, since he won the Valero, has not been too hot. And then you got Gary Woodland, who hits that low, heavy ball 
and there's a few guys that I'm going to lean on that I know their ball flight and what they do. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about them too. All right. Well, that said, let's go jump over to Fantasy National. We're going to do some things over there. We'll do a little bit of analysis. I'll even go down. We'll try to look at some cheapies because I did not put the cheapies in here. But I always give you guys my top five. So we'll talk about that. We'll come out. We'll summarize. But I'm going to give you ownership projections, whether we're going to get this all done and uh, get you out of here so you can get your picks in. All right. Let's go jump over to Fantasy National. Okay, so I've hopped over into Fantasy National, and always I state, if you are putting any dollars on the line, you need to be using Fantasy National, especially from a golfing perspective, because that's all they do, and they have a ton of tools. I've got stuff out there to give you some tutorials they do. I highly recommend it. All right, there's my plug. Let's move on to the information that you guys want to see. So what are we looking at? As always, I'm going to pull up the past 24 rounds of golf off these guys. i got no filters. Just confirm. Turned on. We're going to be looking at DraftKings pricing, but as always, if you're watching this and you use FanDuel or any other application, uh, Yahoo, whatever it is, you can use the picks. It's just going to be a little different from the pricing. And we got this dashboard, what they call a sneak peek, and it gives a lot of information in one view for you. I've got my mini model, I call it, where it's, you know, weighting. These are all weighted pretty equally. You know what? While we're out, well, doesn't matter. We'll keep it this way. Um, but you can see here, you can see their salary, projected ownership, cuts made. We can see the birdies gained, and you're going to want to see this chart, hopefully green and working on the way up uh, over the last 24 rounds. And then you get to see recent results over the past five tournaments they played in. And then tournament history, which you're going to see absolutely nothing because for the longest time, this was a DP World Tour. And I'm curious if they're going to have Shot League. I hope so. Um, I like to use the app and track some guys and see what they're doing in real time. So... Hopefully we have shot link data. I have not looked that up to see if they will, but we'll see. All right, so we're going to go through this quickly, but we're going to go through it via, you know, the, the scoring side, not so much on my model rank. You'll see that here, and that's getting pumped out of this guy right here. And you got a decision to make. If you want to play a guy at the 11,000 range, you got Scotty or John Rahm. And for me, it was, you know, I'm not, it was a, kind of a no-brainer. I think John Rahm still has been struggling a little bit with his short game and putting. Um, it just hasn't been there. Uh, that's all there's to it. And Scotty Scheffler, of course, Texas guy, does very well in the wind. And I'm not saying Rom, of course, from Europe, uh, Spain, that he can't play in the wind. That's not it. I mean, you know, either one you can make an argument for. You can also see birdies over the past, you know, a couple months. Um, you know, finishes. You know, you got Rom at the PGA, just kind of struggled. Um, he's got the win at the Mexico Open. I mean, nothing that really compares, but you also got, I think, who I played one and done, Scotty Shuffler at the PGA Championship at one of his home tracks, missed the cut. But everybody has an off day. Just so happens his off day came on a Friday where he really needed it to not be an off day. With that said, I am going to go with Scotty Scheffler. I'm not going to do too much more analysis on that for you. I think you, you, know, you know those guys pretty well. Then you move down into the tens, and there's only two guys at the 10,000 range which is, I think, a little strange, uh, but that's okay. I'm not complaining. Um, and so I'm going to make a decision there for you. For me, you know, funny enough, it's Patrick. No reason, right? He just won the U.S. Open. That's a lot. And, I know, you know, you're going to hear people talk about, I think, at the Pro-Am, he didn't play so well. Um, from what I heard, I don't care about that. I just look at the two guys that I've got to pick between for a $500 difference. And what keeps coming back to my brain is what, you know, JT has done in some crazy weather conditions. Also, he has an early morning tea time. So I mentioned that all these guys I picked, I think except Will Zalatoris, um, has an early morning tea time. So again, I'm letting you in. What really has influenced a lot of my decision is that. So just be very aware of that. So JT, been playing great golf, right? I mean, of course, he won that PGA Championship, had that crazy eight-stroke comeback on Sunday. Also, we had a, a little bit of weather there. I don't, I don't remember exact what days that they had to fight through, but he's learned a lot of his shot making. Um, and even though he hasn't had the greatest, well, let's go do this. I, I will show you, if you're curious, on my picks, what they've done at the Open. We're not going to get stroke gain data, but we will get, I believe, at least, so only one Open. Um, let's do this i just want to make sure it doesn't uh sometimes it comes up okay so we're just going to go with the open i guess is what they're calling it. so and that's hard right so if you look at last year the open and you try to base any analysis there was no weather whatsoever i made quite a little stink about this after it where 
to me, it felt like just any other round. You, it could have been at the Valero, the Valspar, even easier courses, the RSM. I mean, the Open last year, I think it was at Royal St. George's. It was easy. That's the simplest way to put it. It was just easy. It was not an open type of tournament. So to even look at that is really going to tell us absolutely nothing in my perspective. And right, you had more Cowell win that, and George Spieth was right there. All right, sorry. So let's get back on track. Justin Thomas is my guy out of Fitzy. If I got to play a guy in the 10s, that's who I'm going with. Then we get down to the nines. And this, just so you know, um, Sam Burns has got the early morning tea time. And it was between Will Z. I just really like Will Z right now. And I like him more than Sam Burns. But that's, I think, the only pick I made that is going to be in the afternoon tea time. And I'm kind of skipping over these guys a little bit because I also, you know, Patrick Cantley, I'm not super excited about. Um, Colin Morikawa actually kind of struggled with the putter and you know he, he kind of went back and forth let's go look at that for the u.s open i think on sunday is where he struggled uh of course i don't have it um i forgot that we didn't get that from the u.s open well you can see here he's really struggled with the putter and i talked about some changes he's made but he actually got better with the putter and if i remember right i think it was thursday friday he putted very well and then i felt like maybe saturday for sure sunday it kind of fell back so anyways with all that said, I mean, I'm not saying Will Z is the most amazing putter by any stretch. And I'm actually really shocked that that 175 to 200 uh, is that ranked that bad for him. Huh. I, I, will, I will have to verify that because I felt like his ball striking was way better than that. You know what we're going to do? Give me a moment. Just a second. Okay. So I didn't show what I call my Iron Man slide. So I actually just went into Fantasy National and I'll show you guys this. So you can look through it through the Iron Man. So if you're curious, um, who's been so the better? So if you look at Wilsey overall, with just irons from all different proximities, he's number 11. But funny enough, from that 175 to 200, he he has struggled over the past six tournaments. Um, if we look at which I think is probably could be is equal this 150 to 175, which could end up being more of the shots coming from there. He comes in second. There's that 106. That's just shocking to me. Um, that's where he falls. And then 200 plus, which also quite a bit of shots will come in. He's 11. So anyways, let me show you real quick. Uh, if you want to know who's been killing it with the irons over the past six rounds, because I did not pull this up and put it in. You can see real quick. No shocker. Cam Smith up there, JT. You got Victor Hovland, Mats, Homa, Burns, HV3, who has pulled out of this tournament. Uh, I have no clue why. Uh, Morikawa, Xander. Scheffler, Will Z, Lucas Glover. Um, and I wonder, I, you know, I'd even check. I just, why I'm always, no, I was curious if Griot was going to play in this, but I guess he's just going to take a, a week off and just go play in the open. All right, let's go jump back and get into what we're doing. Okay, so now we're back on the sneak peek view. I When I see something that sticks out to me that just doesn't seem right, uh, I always want to go look at it. And I thought, hey, we're here. Let's do it. You can do it together. Okay. Um, so anyways, what I was stating was you've got to make a decision here and I would not fault you to go to Sam Burns, but I just like Will Z a lot and, but he is going to have the, 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 the not so hot draw uh, of the afternoon, uh, Cam Smith, which I really wasn't sure I was going to play some Cam Smith. Um, but I believe these fairways are a little larger. He is also, I feel a little Australian, like he can play in the winds. The putter has, let's go take a look at Mr. Cam Smith. It's kind of been failing him, and it all started, I believe it was at the PGA Championship, where he had at Southern Hills so many lip outs. It was ridiculous. Um, and I feel like that kind of got in his brain. Now, you can see he gained at Memorial, and then again, you know, I, I watched him at the RBC Canadian Open. I just felt like he was burned out. I think he just needed a break. You can see he played a lot of golf in June, you know, end of May, June. So the hope is, is that he is refreshed. Um, he is going to want to get out there and do what he's been doing. And um, so I like Cam Smith and, you know, we'll see where projected ownership right now is 15. I'm a little shocked at that, but we'll see where it all falls. Um, Hideki, I've got no issues with. Um, you know, of course, he's kind of been on and off. He's had the neck injuries. He had a really good Sunday, what, shot like a 65 at the U.S. Open. Uh, I don't think he had a bogey on the card. So, you know, you could say coming to the great form for 9,000, you could definitely make an argument there. Jordan Spieth's been 
awesome tee to green. You know, been really good with the driver compared to what we always know. And the putter, let's go take a look at that real fast for you, has actually been a bit of the bugaboo. Now, you can see he gained five at the Memorial, two here but missed a cut. Um, but, you know, losing lost seven strokes at Valero this year, two and a half, which I already mentioned, and it still won the tournament. Lost three at Southern Hills. So it's been kind of on and off. So at any point, if Jordan, you know, again, he's got the afternoon tea time, but if he does what Jordan does with the putter, watch out. I've been saying this. It, it would probably be a good bet, um, and I probably should go do that. I haven't even looked at the odds. I think when I did, it was 20-something. Victor Hovland, I feel like, has also been a little wore out and a little bit of a funk, but I believe this just fits him. He also won oh what is it a year ago the bmw over here and i didn't watch a lot of that but i'm pretty sure it's gonna be very similar kind of course um so you know you could throw that in that's not going to show up on anything here but um just a ball striking master and, and let's go take a look at him, what his putter's been doing i feel like it hasn't been too great either but well i take it back so he's actually been funny enough not been hitting the irons uh the tee to green has been a little bit of a struggle but then the putters had to make up for it so Again, you can make the argument if Victor Hovland does what he typically does with the tee to green uh, and somehow can keep that putter going the uh, way he could go. Sun JM, you know, um, his putter has been a down. I've been just kind of off him this year. I, I just have not been promoting him. You can see I uh, gained at the Memorial a little, but his game could definitely translate here. You see the players in that win. And again, I'm, I don't know what his, I don't remember his tee time. If he was afternoon, I'm guessing he got a bad flight. Struggle tee to green, um, but I don't know. I have a str I struggle with Sun JM. I, I don't typically get him right, but uh, you know, not bad recent results. So no issues there. Uh, I like Joaquin Neiman, and that's probably a little bit too. I've got guys in my brain that I know the kind of flight of ball they hit. Uh, Joaquin hits a low, powerful ball that he just should be made for windy events. Even though maybe history does not state that. What you can see from you know the modeling perspective i like he's making birdie still he can go super low super hot and i keep cl clicking on tournament history and there's nothing there so i got to stop doing that um let's go just click on joaquin do a little further analysis so we definitely know he's got the pop off the bat you know can definitely handle moderate super windy still fine gains a half a stroke on the field the putter let him down at the travelers and approach a really nice memorial of course he won the genesis so wouldn't that be kind of funny i think i actually bet joaquin neiman if you guys are curious who i bet uh, i just made a few bets early monday morning nothing that i honestly i'd recommend it was just higher odd things i think bobby mack i bet i think i bet joaquin neiman Cbez, just because you know coming off so if you have any i didn't do my bets uh for this one but of course there's a genesis you just you know the ball striking was crazy Cam Young, of course, I wanted to pick him, but he's an afternoon. I still will place. And don't get me wrong. I'm not just going to build all my lineups with just the morning. Um, but I'm going to definitely, it's going to be heavier weighted there. Uh, you got Ryan Fox, who's been lighting it up over on the DP World Tour. I think he's going to be, you know, it's funny. A lot of people were saying uh, earlier in the week, because I did listen to some stuff this morning, that he was going to be crazy chalky right now, at least through Fantasy National. He's 7% owned. So, I mean, you know, you can make that what, what you want. Tommy Fleetwood, right? You saw he had a runner up here or, you know, yeah, runner up finish at this course, not last year, but the year before. Um, no reason. Also, there, you know, there's rumors out there that he's going to live. It wouldn't shock me. Tommy Fleetwood was, you know, if you look at the guys, they never won on PGA Tour. A few of those guys that went over there. Um, also, you know, he's got a kid married now. Well, been married. I think they just, I think he just had a kid not too long ago. And, uh, He's been doing a lot of traveling over the last few years, playing a lot on the PGA. So it, I get that one. I get it. He's, I think he's, you know, towards that part of his career where he's kind of probably ready to you know, take the paycheck and get out. So all that said, he hasn't announced it yet. That's probably a little bit why I'm not. And also, you know, who knows? I mean, he could do great. Um, it, it makes sense. If the, but the weather, I don't think is that bad. I think you're going to need to score some. So instead, I'd rather go with Corey Connors, who funny enough, doesn't really show up as a great win player. I mean, he won at Valero, but if I remember correctly, weather conditions were crazy. But he's an awesome ball striker. His putting has actually been pretty good. Um, let's go take a gander at that. 
Well, funny enough, it's saying here over the last 12 months, he actually, when I used to look at Corey Connors, for some reason it didn't come up. So scratch that. I guess he has played pretty well in windy conditions against the field. He gains, you know, over a half a stroke. And this is what's been interesting here. Um, the putter has actually been gaining strokes. And in, so kind of like back to that theory, like Victor Hovlin, you know, if you're a great ball striker and you start getting confidence with the putter, you should do very well. Billy Hole, I have no problems. Um, you know, of course, he went to the Memorial, has a couple of missed cuts put in there. You know, I like Billy Hill, but just, again, afternoon tea time. Same with Cameron Young. I mean, actually, these three guys are my flavor, and I will still play these guys. I, I want to make that, a, a you know, put out there that don't, because I'm not picking them, don't play them. It's just I am going to take a narrative because I'm not putting 150 lineups in this thing. Uh, I'll probably be around 20, 25 when it's all said and done, the big game, the large GPP 200K game. That's what I'm kind of positioning. I probably should have stated that. Um, all right, could you still play these in cash game? Any guys that I pick, I think are good. And I think you can also play them in one and done. Um, we'll talk a little bit about one and done when I get to my picks. Anyways, all these guys, I think it makes sense. Max Homa, his best, you know, uh, finish was at the PGA Championship in a major. And then, you know, the U.S. Open, I was kind of on him and he kind of faltered there. So there's a little bit of that. Uh, Cameron Young, right, missed the cut at the U.S. Open in the Memorial. So, you know, we're not seeing these crazy finishes, but I think this is a great course. He could do it, so no issues. Um, the guy that I like, and I think he's going to be chalky, Keegan Bradley, you know, he's $7,900. He's making birdies. He's, like, a lot like Corey Connors has been putting. Let's go click on Keegan for you real quick. He can handle himself in the wind. So you, you see here he gains over a stroke against the field, even though these, sometimes these bars kind of throw you off. And then this is what's been interesting right here. Over his last five tournaments, I should state that, he's gained almost two and a half strokes with the putter. You look at the last 10 tournaments, on average, he's gaining a stroke and a half. That's very unique. Gained, you know, at the Wells Fargo, gained, you know, 10 strokes. Of course, that was at that PTC Potomac Amadel Farms. Um, yeah, so I like Keegan. Justin Rose, you know, this is kind of his bag. He's been showing up. Of course, the RBC just went in fuego with the Irons. Um, let's go take a quick look at him too. Cause I didn't think I'd be picking a whole lot of JR. Um, but he typically does a putter. You can see green and everywhere we want. You know, this is where I was saying when Enfuego with the putter gained almost nine strokes against the field, but he also did it T to green. I mean, so I have no issues there. He's had some good finishes. So for that price tag, uh, 7,900, I'm going to play some JR. A lot of people talking about Terrell Hatton, you know, he's going back to Europe. Maybe he'll, you know, not have his little blow-ups, and he's just been complaining about every course he plays. When Terrell Hatton was in his, you know, heyday, and I'm talking like a year and a half, a couple of years ago, we can go back here. Well, let's do it this way. Let's look at So this is when I remember, you know, he won the Arnold Palmer, the CJ Cup, the Palmetto. He was just amazing with his irons. That's how he was doing what he was doing. And then if we go lately, it's been kind of sporadic. The putter's still been holding, but it's kind of been on and off with that. Also, the tee ball has been a little sporadic. Um, so until I kind of see his irons come back, he'd be another one. It's not going to shock me if he makes the announcement uh, that he's going to live maybe after the Open. Killer Keith makes sense. I don't have a problem with it. I like his ball striking, but, you know, not for me. He's also got an afternoon tee time. I like Mito. If I'm going to pay the money, I'm going to go to Mito. You can see he ranks fifth in this modeling perspective, makes a ton of birdies, right? Should have won the PGA, messed up on the 18th hole. Um, I think he does pretty well in the wind too. Also, of course, from Chile, like has that kind of same flight pattern uh, as Joaquin, of course, live together, kind of same, but he actually gains over a stroke on the field. So I really like Mito here. Morocco, I think he just won, and again, I apologize. I've not been watching them. I think he just won the last tournament uh, what the heck was it? The, uh, yeah, the, uh, the Irish, my apologies, uh, where you had just Seamus Power and Lowry, who are neither of those guys are in the field here. Um, but Adrian Moronk, uh, it's not going to show up, but did just win that. So pretty good form. Brian Harmon, I don't know. No, no issues. Everything says he should be good. Um, just not who I think of. Funny enough, the one that I'm, this is the one that I'm going off course history. So, and also he's got an early morning tea time and you saw Lucas Herbert, also, his win at Bermuda was crazy windy uh, at the vacation swing. So let's go look at that real fast. I don't have any data because it was there. Nope, we just know he gained 13.6. But he has done, so look at the Arnold Palmer. 
you know, ended up seventh in those crazy conditions, made the cut at the players, had a good showing at the Southern Hills, which also had some win. He's very streaky. I mean, the guy, he can hit the ball a ton off the tee, but it can just be all over the map. So that's a little bit of a concern, but can get out of the putter. Um, for 7,600, I'm just, is that's kind of my like little stretch. Also, like I said, kind of a course history play. Bobby Mack, I told you I bet. I no interest in Leishman. Munoz, he had an earlier tee time. I'm still going to play him. Let me just put that out there. I am going to play a little bit of him. You can see ball striking extraordinaire. Uh, good showing at the U.S. Open. So he's my guy. Um, I probably won't bet him first round because he does have that afternoon. I'll sprinkle some first rounds for the early morning guys. Uh, there's some, you know, talk about uh, Alex Norton again. Maybe goes back, has these three missed cuts. Of course, you know, tough fields. Um, but, you know, gets back on his, you know, homeland or whatever you want to say, used to his Lynx golf, uh, could do very well. I'm going to fade and go to Seabez. I told you HV3 has pulled out of the tournament, so we have to worry about him. I, I like Seabez for this. I mean, it kind of goes a little against my ball striking. Is I, I look at him as more of a short game. But you can see here, over the last six tournaments, he has been ball striking pretty well. He's got that, you know, kind of back four, so looks like, he, you know, if it stays on this, he can miss the cut. But T2, a T15, a T12, and then you sprinkle in a couple of missed cuts. Aaron Rye passed champ. You know, I think he's going to be a little chalky. I, I haven't really seen a whole lot since, what, Tory Pines? Um, I guess the RBC Canadians, the last time he's really done something of real serious note. Chris Kirk, I think, is kind of interesting. I, I'm going to go with him. Uh, I like the way he modeled out. I also like that, you know, if the putter works, which I believe, let me go check this. I want to see what he's been doing with Okay in the wind. I just wanted to check that. So the putter has been kind of hot. That's typically where he has kind of faltered a little bit, but real solid. This is the last 10 tournaments, tee to green. So we need the irons, I guess, if anything we would want to wish for. Um, just been playing good golf. And so I kind of like it. He's also got a morning tee time. Yep. Kuchu, no. Mad McNeely, I bet him just saw it. I don't know why. I just felt like this could be a good course for him. I still kind of feel that way, but I just bet it. I'm not going to play him pretty much in DFS. I'm going to go to Gary Woodland. When every time I do this, it bites me in the butt. But, of course, his win at Pebble Beach. I mean, I just, Gary's ball flight, he hits that low, heavy ball. He's really good with the irons. Good ball striker. And it's not fast, hard greens. And remember, he also showed up at the Arnold Palmer, which was crazy conditions. And I think, this is off memory, I think he made the cut at the players. Nope, missed the cut. But also the Honda. I believe I remember right. Let's go look at that real quick. I can find out what was the wind moderate. So it wasn't it wasn't crazy windy, but you know I don't know. I just feel like for seventy three hundred, that's a pretty solid play. Six percent. All right, we're gonna move kind of fast. Uh, let's see if there's anybody else. All right, I'm just gonna kind of flow. So Cagely, I like. Uh, so if I went on the cheapies, he'd be a cheapie I play. You got Minwoo Lee, of course, past champion. Showed up at the U.S. Open. It's, his sister is just kicking butt over an LPGA. You got Hao Tong Lee, who almost quit the game and then went out and won the BMW. Um, also showed up, which is kind of funny, at the Sony. I always think of him, I think it was the PGA Championship is where he, da, 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 right here, um, when he almost, well, I think he led, what, after day two? Kind of talked about that. Johnny Vegas, I think, is probably an interesting play. You know, hasn't been in the good form that he was, it seemed like, earlier in the year. Mackenzie Hughes, uh, Luke List, actually, I am uh, making my top 15. Um, I like the ball striking down and his putter. Let's go take a look at him a little bit like a Keegan. Of course, you know, he won at the Farmers, which I believe that was his first win on tour, right? Uh, yeah, yep, that was. Um, the putter, woo, look at that. So gain 14 strokes T to green. Gained 10 with the irons and lost eight strokes putting. So I am not concerned that's going to happen again. Before that, he was gaining with there. And we all know Luke List is Achilles heel uh, is typically the putter. But that's that's a little ridiculous. So I'm fine to go back to him. I think, you know, for that price tag, uh, could do something here. Also, he's got a morning tea time. Got Thomas Tetri last year, got into a playoff. Um, Siwoo Kim, I think, could be interesting. Not, you know, not the greatest recent, but it means still models out well for that price tag. Now I'm just going to look. I don't think I have any other guys select. Richie Ramsey, he is actually from Scotland. So if you wanted to play that angle, 
who knows how many times he's played this course. I haven't done a ton of analysis on him. I just know he's actually from Scotland. Patrick Rogers actually rates out really well. Um, of course, we were all kind of on him for the John Deere. Just want to see here what he's been up to. So he really struggled off the tee at the John Deere. Gained quite a bit with the putter and the irons. Let's go do this real quick. Just curious. So I'm looking here just for like windy courses. So that, you know, you could look at the, the Bermuda would make sense. It's got some wind there. RSM can get windy there. Of course, Sea Island. I mean, you can also just look at this where his last 12 events. I mean, he has gained. I was just kind of curious on what courses he's done well. Stinson's actually gotten a little better. I mean, he was horrific for a while. Um, got a little better, but still not. Nah, I mean, he does have a decent placing here uh, last few years, but the field was also nowhere near. I'm just going to scroll through. <laughs> Russell Knox would be sneaky, I think. I, I, you can see I don't think a lot of people are going to play him, but um, I might plug him in. Uh, out of the Horgard brothers, Ross Moose is the better. Out of Nikolai, but Nikolai can be a really good ball striker. Um, does have a win on the DP World Tour this year. Matthew Neesmith, why not? Let's do it. I'll just click him right now. Bam. He'll be my guy below 7,000 that I'm highly going to recommend. Um, he's always been a really good ball striker. The models love him. This has always been the issue, but he has shown up with the putter a little bit, right? He almost won the Valspar. Gained four strokes there, tough track. So I will go ahead and recommend Matthew Neesmith below 7,000 for you. No, thank you, Ian Poulter. Now, here's a little play, right? Ian Poulter, I showed you, has had a couple good finishes here. He's also just pissed off, right? And so I might play some Ian Poulter uh, just with that hole. He's also got an early tee time. So you know what? I'm going to go and put my stamp on it. And I'm not a fan of Ian Poulter on so many different fronts. But I think there could be something with that crazy early tee time and just to come out and kind of give the bird. That's just typical Ian Poulter. So we'll go ahead and do that. He's going to be one of my guys. Ryan Palmer showed up here last year. So I'm literally picking my cheapies for you guys as we do this. Um, and I'm going to just look in at Arnau. He just, I don't know if he just won or it was up there. Um, I think I'm going to play a little bit of him. I do want some of these guys down here that are on the European tour, and I kind of like him. Not a ton to give you. Kurt Kiniyama, I actually bet. So I got to plug him in. So we got three cheapies for you. Matty Wallace has had a little here or there. Like I think, like I told you guys, Brandon Grace, you know, had a live win, but I, I don't even know how you weight that. And Antoine Rosner, for whatever reason, just keeps coming up. Um, and we haven't seen him in a while. And I have not looked at what he's been doing on the DP World Tour. And, of course, the uh, Dell Mash play does not come in here. I'm not going to pick that. You know what? Maybe Alex Smalley I'll throw in there. Um, no. I, I don't know what's going on with J.J. Spawn. I can't do that. Lucas Glover would be somebody that I would be interested in from a ball striking perspective. And I think he showed up. I think he has played in this event. His putter has just been brutal. His irons did not work at the John Deere. I mean, it'd be a bit of a stretch, but you know what? I'm going to go ahead. You know who I was thinking it was Garrett Hago too. He's been just brutal, but right. Both his wins on the DP world tour have been on Canary islands, right? It was on windy courses. You know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to go with Garrett Hago. I think it's who I'm going to plug in over Lucas. It just to get a little different. I also bet Wyndham Clark. I'll give you that, right? He's had some crazy putting rounds. Stuart Sink's down here. I didn't even know he was in the field. He could be an interesting play for you. He's got some pop on the bat. I'm trying to think, any good correlation. He won. What was his major? He won, I think, in 2014. Right, he beat, uh, I think it was the Open, right? Uh, beat our buddy Tom Watson. Okay, so I was correct. I was wrong on the year. Stuart Sink, right? I was pulling for Tom Watson. This is back in 2009, hence why it's not coming up. Won, at that time, the British Open, the Open um so there you go i was right i just was way off at man 2009 uh guido migazzoli right showed up at the u.s open something about the majors um he does tend to show up could be an interesting play there's jack senor who did pretty good last well last year year before 
Callum Turn, um, I think I threw a bet on him. He's been in pretty good form and uh, was, I think, 400 to 1. I mean, an idea. All right, I think that's enough. Uh, you've got enough of the guys, and we'll go summarize my top 15 after we get out of here. Okay, let's talk about ownership projections. Again, this is uh, Wednesday. Let's update this while we're here. Uh, around uh, 3.30 Eastern. And we've got this number here, 7,800 lineups actually entered into, I believe, pumped over into DraftKings. So that's the number that I always want to look at. And then what we're going to do is look at this far right number. It's going to be the closest to what actual ownership is. And amazing enough, everybody's on Xander. He doesn't have the early tee time. And the guys with this should have, you know, the early tee times, except for Will Z. Um, you got Scotty JT, who I'm on. You know, there's Rom, no issues. There's Will Z. Uh, Homa's pretty chalky. You know, not, not getting a discount yet on Cam. I thought he would be lower. You got Jordan Morikawa. They got Burns. Cameron Young, I get it. I'll probably play a little bit of him. There's my Mito. Can't lay no thank you. Um, Matsuyama. Connors, Bradley. I'm going to just start skipping down to the guys that I'm picking to see. So Victor's at 10. Neiman less than 10. You got JR at 8. Kirk at a, around 8 ish. There's my Lucas Herbert. So even, you know, recent form that you kind of saw from my modeling, he's still up there for my ownership. Neesmith at 6. Arnos, Arnau. I, I like to say Arnaus, but it's Arnau, I think. Uh, you got Lukey List, Sebaz. Gary Woodland at four. Sorry, you can see the percentages here. I'm just kind of scrolling through. Any guys that got unique? Smalley would be less than 4%. I think Wyndham Clark actually would be an interesting play. I might sprinkle him in. If I create kind of that Luke list, Wyndham Clark, if I create kind of the bombers off the tee, I'd throw him in there. It's kind of odd. Mark Leishman, um, I think could be an interesting play. And when I see this ownership there, Let's go click on Leishman. This always happens, right? I, I just want to see what he's been doing. I have been keeping a close eye on him. But, of course, from Australia, I've always said he's my kind of cheap Cam Smith. The putter has not been great. I mean, Leishman typically has to do it around the green to putter, and it's kind of funny that's not been that hot. I mean, nothing. This was last, like, really nice. So he had a nice start to the year. Um on all perspectives. And then it's just kind of falling a bit apart. I mean, nothing, not falling apart, but nothing great. I mean, the last would be the U S open and I don't have stroke gain on him. I might play a little Leishman, maybe put through a little Aussie team together. Um, there's my kitty Yama. I think the one time I picked him, he did not do well, but of course, you know, has played pretty decent. Mad McNeely, no love, uh, at 2%. Trying to see anyone's name that might stick out. Joel Damon, right? His win, what was it, Corrales? Um, his only win on tour was in very windy condition, so I don't have an issue playing him there. Everybody's falling out of love with Russell Knox. Could be interesting. And is there anybody? Oh, let's see here. Gary Higo. Yeah, there you go. Um, I might try to play him. And then here's Ian Poulter. Everybody hates, hates him right now, but I think that could be a sneaky play. All right, let's go talk weather. Okay, so I just updated the weather, and you're going to want to use Wind Finder, and you're going to go to this North Berwick. Type that in. That is right where the course is at. You can see it is quite windy there right now. And if we look at right here, averaging mid-20s, going up to the 40s, but we don't really care about that. Let's talk about Thursday. So here's what I'm seeing and why I want the guys in the morning. Um, it is going to get quite windy in the afternoon. So these guys, you know, tee off in the morning, they're going to be done around 1, 2 o'clock, depending. Um, they're going to definitely get the better draw comparative to the guys that have to tee off, you know, 1, 2 o'clock. So, and then uh, we go into Friday, it's kind of just equal, um, at least what they're showing. You know, it's going to be, you know, maybe a little better in the morning, but I still like have a good Thursday and we'll see how it all shakes out because I think there's a big difference, not as big of a difference for Friday. So that's my thoughts. Um, if we go look at the full four day forecast right now, so you can see again, there's Thursday, which doesn't really give a good showing of what's actually happening there. Um, just trying to see what they're looking like. So it's like Saturday and Sunday. I mean, again, if you go by this, and again, wind just changes all the time. The biggest thing is keep an eye on this, especially if you're playing showdown. 
North Berwick is what you're going to want to type in the win finder. All right, let's jump back, wrap this up for you guys. Okay, so my top five Fab Five picks for you guys for the Genesis Scottish Open. Give me the Texan Scotty Shuffler, of course, just been amazing all year. Um, no issues. I like him in these kind of conditions. I, if I had to pick between him and Ron, which I am, I'll go with Scotty. Of course, we know JT Elite um, hasn't always had the best showings on the Lynx Golf, but has gotten better. And also, we know he can work the ball every way and has done very well in the windy conditions this year. Uh, hence the players. Cam Smith, this is the one where, I don't know, if it burns me because I've been, I'm a Cam Smith truther. I, like I told you, I've been picking him and been on him for the last few years and kind of watched his rise starting at the FedEx Cup a couple of years ago to, you know, one of the top elite players. I believe his game will come back. I'm kind of hoping the ownership is not there. I'm hoping that he's less owned. Um, so I'm going to stick with my guy. Woolsey, the only guy really I think I'm picking that has an afternoon tea time on Thursday, but I just love his skill set. And I also, like I said, I'll play Max Homa. I'll play the Cam Youngs, all depending on my builds. Um, but, um, yeah, I like Will Z. And then Joaquin Neiman, I think he's in the 8,000 price range. Uh, I just like his ball flight. So, you know, that would be my top five guys that I will start a lot of my lineups with. And then to kind of build out the middle, again, uh, you've got Victor Hovland who, uh, you know, hasn't been in the greatest of form, but I believe, again, won the BMW uh, last year over here and also has just been, uh, he's just an amazing ball striker and the putter's been doing well. So just got to get his uh, ball striking back, funny enough. It's hard to say that, but that's what's been the, the hamper and the issue. Corey Connors, funny enough, been doing it all. Great ball striker, been putting well. I don't see any issues there. Of course, one at the Valero, so a little bit of win. Um JR has just kind of, you know, shown up again. So I'm just on it because he's in a $7,000 price range. And, you know, he's he's a great putter. That hasn't went away. It was the ball striking, but it seems like it's come back. So let's go with him over in the native Europe, England guy. Chris Kirk's probably the one that's a little quinky for me. Not the guy that's really been the build, but just everything I can think about uh, and the price tag I like the way. And he's got the early early morning tea time. And then Seabaz, I'm going to stick with him. Picked him last week, um, you know. It, a lot was done with the putter, which he does have to gain quite a bit with the putter, but I think he'd do well here. And then Unsung, uh, you got uh, Keegan, who I think is one of the better values on the board from his pricing standpoint. Um, been putting well. Great ball striker, always has been. So no issues there. We got Mito, of course, could have won the PGA we talked about. Uh, great tee to green. The only, what I like, a, what I don't like Mito is where he's got to go and shoot like 20 something under. I just don't see that in his game yet. Um, maybe I'll be shocked when he posts a 61 or 62, but I haven't seen where he can go that low. But for what I see here, he's a perfect fit. Luke List is going to need to uh, get back to your ball striking. Funny enough, the putter has been, you know, off. It typically stinks, but hopefully here he can uh, make a few more putts. Gary Woodland, I never get you right. So we'll see. You hit that ball flight that I like. Uh, same with Mito Pierre. They hit. They all hit that ball flight that I really like uh, to handle these windy conditions. And then Lucas Herbert, right? Your win was in Bermuda. You are very sporadic. Keep it in play, and he can get super hot with the putter. So that's my top 15 guys. I didn't put one and done because we're all. It's getting down to the end, and I don't know who you guys got left. Um, if you have a unique kind of high up guy, I don't think it's a bad time to play him. I don't have, you know, the guys that I picked, I think are all fine. You, you know, the, like the top five, top 10. If you have any of those guys left, use them. If I had to go with someone kind of off the cuff, I think Joaquin Neiman, I was kind of leaning on. The guys that, like I guess I hit the, you know, a Gary Woodland. If you, if you, you know, if you don't have anybody higher than that, you want to burn. Um, Mito Piera wouldn't be bad. I'm trying to think of anybody else from a one and done perspective. But like I said, if you've got the John Roms or the JTs left, um, and you need to move up the board. You know, a lot of people don't have them left. So just a thought. All right, that's it. That's my complete shows, which was one show. I'll put in pretty much into one. But I wanted to get it out for you guys. You know, uh, of course, we're all on holidays. I hope you guys had an amazing 4th of July. And um, I'm excited to watch some golf and should be on pretty early for us so here in the States. So I got to get up and start watching golf. So Enjoy the Genesis Scottish Open. Uh, of course, I'll be back for the Open to do a nice show. Won't do anything for the Barracuda. And like I said, for the Barbasol, it just, just wasn't worth it. When I, like I said, when I started to look through that field, I just couldn't handle it. Do me honor. Click that like button. Share it with anybody else that you think. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe and follow me on Twitter. All right, guys. I appreciate it. And all the best of luck to us. And I'll talk to you guys, uh, well, in a few days. Take care.